Earth Day is April 22nd. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn about the free science games and activities your students can play at Legends of Learning to learn about Earth Day. Understanding ADHD and Helping Kids Succeed, Episode 289. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking with Katherine Firestone, founder of the Fireborn Institute. Katherine, we're talking today about kids who have ADHD and helping them succeed and thrive. But you, in your story, you have ADHD, and you said you were diagnosed as a junior. Help us understand, for those of us who don't have ADHD, you know, what this what this feels like. Help us empathize with what you live with every day. You know, it's different. ADHD has a lot of different manifestations. But for me, what it really felt like was I felt like an imposter. I felt like I'm tricking everybody that I'm smart. Um, I don't really belong in these classes. When I was young, I had a very hard time learning how to read. Through high school, I had a difficult time reading. I would skip ahead. I would forget things. I couldn't track. I literally couldn't read the sentence because I couldn't track it. I would have to highlight the words just so my eyes would stay on track. And so it just felt like it took me so much longer than everybody else to get my work done. When you have ADHD, it's very difficult to not also have anxiety because you're thinking about everything, right? Like I'm, I was constantly worried about my friends, how what I had just said was affecting something, how what I was doing was being interpreted. And so you're, you've got that constant, you know, thought going on and it's very difficult to focus on one thing, unless you're super interested in that one thing. And then it's totally like, I don't have to think about it. I'm totally focused on that. So my parents would say that I had a one track mind and that's absolutely true when I cared about something. And so this is why parents who have kids with ADHD, they see their kids, they're like, my kid can focus. He's playing video games like for hours. You know, <laughs> <laughs> That's because they're really interested. Like that's what really interests your kid. And so they're going to spend their time doing that. They can focus on it and it feels really good to be good at something. And video games provide that. So again, with kids with ADHD who often struggle with, you know, being good at a lot of things because they can't focus. Focus, it feels good to be good at something. And so naturally, they are going to focus on those things. So Catherine, what did it feel like when you got your diagnosis? How did you process that? And did it improve things in your life? And if so, how? So for me, it was a relief because it felt like this is it. This is what makes me different from the other students. It's not that I'm an imposter. Uh, I actually am really smart, but I do have something that's, you know, holding me back to some degree. But now we can do something about it. Now that we know what this is, you know, we can hire an executive functions coach. We can think about strategies. You know, I can go on medication. It really empowered me and, and boosted my confidence. And I know that that is not the same for all kids. A lot of kids feel like there's something wrong with them. And I, you know, I'm on a mission to tell you, no, there isn't, you know, and you are fantastic. And, and I credit my ADHD with a lot of my success. I think it has really actually helped me in the long term, but I just needed some help sometimes staying focused, showing the teachers how smart I really was and having the diagnosis really helped that. How do you help parents who they either suspect their kids have ADHD or they realize their kids have been diagnosed with it and they're just trying to get an understanding of, of where do they start? Yeah, that's a really good question. So most kids who struggle with ADHD have a really difficult time with executive function skills. These are all the skills that you need to be a good student, to focus, to sustain your attention, to organize, to plan, to inhibit your responses, um, to stop doing something fun and start doing something boring like homework. <laughs> so, um, so a really good place to start is to learn about executive function skills. And Peg Dawson and Richard Guar are some of the leading researchers in executive skills. They have a questionnaire and it goes through all the different executive functions and it asks you questions to figure out where your strengths and weaknesses are. And I strongly encourage parents to fill this out for themselves and then also think about where their kids fall on these lines because it will help you as a parent 
figure out what are your executive function strengths and weaknesses and what are your kids? And then you'll be able to empathize with them when you see, oh, my strength is organizing, but my kid cannot organize at all. That's going to give you an understanding of, you know, okay, this, I can see where this is coming from now. Let me help my kid with this. And then also, you know, I definitely recommend finding a psychiatrist who can help your kid. I definitely recommend finding an executive functions coach. The earlier you can get the interventions going, um, you know, not just medication, but, you know, figuring out, figuring out how to study, how to read effectively, those kinds of strategies, the sooner you can help your kid develop those strategies, the better off they're going to be in the long term. And the big thing I think is important because I have two, two of my three kids have learning differences is creating an organization system that works for them. You shouldn't be the one who has to keep it organizing. Like my son has a, a big iron clipboard. We call it the iron planner. And mm-hmm. he puts everything he needs to do in there. He clips everything to the front and then it's a kind of a big hard side metal case. I would never, ever in a million years use that system, but it totally works for him. His grades typically will go up by five to 10 points average when he's using his iron planner. So isn't part of it saying, OK, let's find what works for you and not what I do? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's very difficult. We can't force our kids to do what we did or what worked for us. It really has to come from them, what works for them. Everyone's got a their different organizational style, and we have to just figure out whatever it is for our kid that's going to make them work because that's going to get their buy-in and then they're going to use it. And if you try and impose something that worked for you or that this that works that the school has decided works, if it doesn't work for your kid, it's not going to work for them and they're just not going to use it. So definitely being innovative with those ideas is so important. So you help kids with with ADHD and their parents and help them succeed. But I also know you're kind of big into SEL, social emotional learning. Yeah. What is the emotional side of this that you have to help students come to grip with? So because, you know, so much of of teaching is helping kids believe in themselves. Yeah. Well, so there's definitely that um, anxiety piece that I talked about before. Like I said, when you have ADHD, it's very difficult to not have anxiety about it um, because you know that you're different, um, you know, and if you have more of that hyperactive part, you know that you, other classmates are not as active as you and maybe aren't getting in as much trouble as you are. And so knowing that about yourself is important. And then you can learn some strategies like I'm a huge proponent of meditation and yoga yoga and taking brain breaks. These are all things that are very helpful for kids with ADHD to be more mindful about what they're doing. Um, And then that's going to help calm their anxiety. And it's going to help them think in the moment of being active, um, you know, being more present and thinking about, um, you know, what should I be doing right now, helping them with that response inhibition so they can feel more comfortable at school and more like they fit in. But I'm not saying, you know, they shouldn't have the opportunity to to run around and get their energy out. They need that too. We need to provide them with opportunities for that as well. So Catherine, as we finish up, would you give a 30 second pep talk to teachers who are struggling with all the ADHD kids they have in their classroom so that we can reach and encourage those kids and help them to be their best? Uh, sure. You know, the thing to remember about kids with ADHD is like, they really do want to please you. And, um, you know, they have so much to offer and I know that they're so difficult. Um, but if you can, you know, empathize with them and understand, you know, they're not acting out because they want to, it's because they just have this innate need. If you can figure out with them, work with them to figure out what can fill that need in another way, uh, you know, they can do amazing, creative, really high thought level kinds of stuff. Especially when you agree, Catherine, if we can find those things that they love. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. I've had kids who love Minecraft or who love different types of things and, you know, whether it's a sport or a certain genre of books. And once I know that, you know, you can really unleash uh, so much learning if you can get them excited. So educators, I know that I've heard people sit around the lunch table saying, oh, 20 years ago, this. Okay, well, we live in today. (laughs) And today is that we have a lot of precious, wonderful students with ADHD that we love and we want to reach and understanding them, helping the parents and the teachers and the students all be on the same team. We all want them to learn. We all want them to succeed. 
And we want our classrooms to be a better place. And in my understanding, ADHD, take a look at the resources at the Fireborn Institute. They have a lot of wonderful resources for parents, for kids to help with these things. And we'll also link to this fascinating executive functioning skills quiz that I think I'm going to take a look at and maybe use with my students. So thank you so much, Catherine, for helping us to understand. Thanks for having me. Legends of Learning is sharing free games and Earth Day resources. Go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash earth to play the science games and activities for Earth Day. Legends of Learning has fun, engaging science games for grades three through eight aligned with next generation science standards. Check out my review of their product on my blog this week and celebrate Earth Day with some exciting games at Legends of Learning. Just go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash earth. Thank you for listening to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.